So we're here in Ingo Swan's studio and home, right here on the Bowery. And he had been here since the early 60s. And as many of us know, shared this street with many important artists. It was very exciting to be able to walk in and sort of feel like there was a pause. And we weren't in 2016. We were back when Ingo really inhabited this space and was being creative. And that's really the genesis of so much of this is understanding the Bowery of the past 50 years and how this really was a creative center for not only New York, but the world. Comparing the work of the early 60s to the late 80s, you see the evolution of different body types and you can definitely understand and see how the culture of New York and the downtown scene, as it really evolved, you see it really affecting some of the imagery in Ingo Swan's paintings. Ingo Swan was actually a very noted psychic and he started really writing about human energetics and psychics starting in the 60s. And really what he's most known for is this idea of remote viewing. A remote viewing is the ability to see places that are physically remote from an individual with nothing more than maybe the coordinates of that place or a little bit of information. In the 70s, during uh, the Cold War, you know, there was, we were in a race with the Soviets for everything, the weaponry, getting into the space and it was discovered that the Soviets may have had psychic spies, um, spies who could remote view, who could see important bases or military sites in the U.S. So Ingo Swan was brought on to help to train a force of like-minded um, American spies who had similar abilities. So his later work is some of the most complex in that you do see references that are quite diverse. He begins to really complicate ideas of what pure creation is and how that works, which is one of the most important themes that you see running throughout art history.